Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host, Joan Millman, and this is episode 152, Choose Your Own Adventure. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 152 of the Shiny Bees podcast. I am Jo, I'm your host, and today is Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday, the 22nd of July 2020. How are you? I hope you are well, living the dream since last time I spoke to you last week. If you're a new listener, hello, welcome, joining us today. And if you are a returning listener, thank you as always, for coming back again and hanging out with me. I always appreciate it. So this week, I've got a bit of chat about choosing your own adventure. Semi-rant, semi-life advice, semi, this is what I'm kind of thinking right now. Yeah, chit-chat about, a lot about the knitting and about kind of other things. There'll be some news as well about um, what I'm doing with our kind of Facebooky community thing. I think I've got a solution for that that I want to kind of run past you, I guess, um, and see if you have any feedback and things. And um, otherwise, yeah, just meeting up for a little bit of a catch up. This week in two days time is going to be my eight year podiversary. Yeah, eight flipping years of the Shiny Bees podcast. Can you believe it? Eight years. That's forever on the internet because internet years are like dog years. And can't believe it. Yeah, eight years. Who'd have thought it? Who would have thought this, you know, little experiment in a office spare room in rural Limpopo in South Africa would turn into the Shiny Bees podcast via however many different houses and however many different iterations and eight years of fun frolics and fiber. But yeah, it is. It is eight years. So I'm going to do another episode on Friday, you lucky, lucky things, you. And it'll be basically, it'll be like a bit of a roundup of my favorite parts, my favorite things over the last sort of eight years. And hoping my new, one of my new websites will be ready by then. But you know, pushing it seeing as it's it's online and it's got wordpress installed but that's it so far to have it done by friday given we're in the middle of a global pandemic still but i'm gonna give it a smash because you know what i'm like let's spend time i'm a time lord after all right mm, we'll see we will see anyway nice to be back with you first up and not that i am one for starting with apologies but i kind of have to apologize I was playing around with my Shiny Bees website, the show notes site for this podcast, the home of the podcast, and updating some plugins and all of that good stuff. And somehow, and I'm not entirely sure how, but somehow I managed to do something to it. It must have been my fault. I mean, it's only me clicking the button, so it must have been me. Um, Managed to unpublish like 200 blog posts and put them into the bin. Like loads of the show notes for the episodes and um, I tried to republish them all and didn't realise until I was 46 emails down range that it was actually emailing all of the subscribers every time I published another episode and I was kind of like clicking select all 25 restore now restore to me doesn't isn't published not the same thing restore is put it back restore does not require an email to anyone doesn't require 46 emails to my lovely patient subscribers so if I sent you 46 emails I do love you because a lot of you that I apologize to in in the group on Facebook were like I just thought you loved me and I do love you don't do not mistake the fact that I accidentally sent you 46 emails for me not loving you I do love you I just didn't intend to send you 46 emails So I do apologise for that. I managed to fix it and republish all of those show notes, but I thought I'd just let it die down a little bit before I published the show notes for last week's episode. So you can call me Spammy Bees if you want. I'll take it on the chin. It was completely my fault. And as I say, I do apologise for completely deluging your inbox by accident uh, last week. And yeah, 
other than that, I have been working on finding a new home for our community. I've mentioned this like a number of times now. We have a Facebook group community at the moment. I used to have one at the beginning on Ravelry that used to work really quite well. And a few years ago, the Ravelry boards just started to get a little bit quiet Um in response, I think, to the rise of more social media and more chatting on Instagram and, you know, things like that, that people just kind of stopped going to Ravelry for the forums. And it just felt like it was a bit of work. And a lot of people find the Ravelry forums a little bit intimidating. Some of the groups were angry AF, like, do not get me wrong, there were, there were some angry people on Ravelry. And I can understand why people wouldn't necessarily want to post anything if, you know, it's not a particularly friendly environment. So I decided to, and and the interface was quite old. So I decided to kind of move more towards a like easier to use, more familiar platform maybe in Facebook at a time when the Facebook groups, like it's been three years ago, I think we moved to that were quite cool. There was a separate app, so you didn't have to go into bloody Facebook and <laughs> you tell what's coming, aren't you? Um, you didn't have to go into Facebook. You could just go into the groups app. You could, you know, there were no uh, algorithms on that. There was no advertising on that uh, when the groups function was quite new. Obviously, fast forward three years, Ravelry has gone to hell in a handcart and you can't get on there without having a headache, a migraine, a seizure or, or all three. Like it's it's hideous to use at the moment. Even I'm like, my eyes are hurting, I need to get off here. And I don't have any issues. They're not listening to anything anyone's saying to them. And the the forums, you know, if you don't even want to go on there for patterns, you're not going to want to go on there for the forums. Um, And reading white, you know, really harsh white backgrounds with black text. Like it it does hurt your eyes. There's no two ways about it. And I've got things on my, my monitors that stop it hurting. Like I've got flux and all that kind of stuff. Um that automatically changes the shades on the um, monitors for whether it's day or night. I've got all of that stuff. It's still flipping hurts. They're just not listening. So that's a a, a fat no for me. And Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, probably the most depressing, unfriendly places on the internet right now. You can't see what you want in the order you want to see it because someone's decided that you need an algorithm to help you follow who you want it to follow in the first place right so the algorithms do not show you the things that you want to see and they show you a lot of goff that you don't want to see they add randomly follow people that you don't follow um it is net the most negative horrible place at the moment frankly on on all of the internet the doom scrolling is real. Like I never, I never knew what the word of it for it was, but I've heard it called doom scrolling, where you're just like on the internet and you just keep looking at really bad stuff. Um, but to bringing it back to like the the Facebook thing in particular, uh, the community is on there, but I'm 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 in there. Like I go and post stuff, and I like the opportunity to go live if I want to go live. But I haven't actually really been doing that at all for for years now. In there. The reason being that I don't have the Facebook app on my phone and um, that's through choice. Like I don't want them monitoring absolutely everything that I say and do, but it appears that they do anyway. And if I go onto it, I'll go onto it with um, through the browser, which doesn't allow you to kind of go live. You have to use that app to do that. And I don't really want to do that. I also don't really want to be sat at my desktop necessarily doing it um, via Ecamm or something like that. So as a result, I'm kind of not in there that much because I hate the platform, right? They've put algorithms into the group. No, it's not, it's not chronological anymore. So I can't, I do quite often miss messages and replies uh, through the notifications. I don't see things that people have said, and I don't want someone to kind of bounce into my group and be new and then be ignored. That's not like the shiny bees way. So between that and all the adverts and the fact that like competitors, I'm not that I'm, you know, I need to be worried about competitors necessarily, but competitors can now put ads into groups as well. It's just not a very nice experience. When you kind of come to my beautiful universe, if you will, 
it needs to be beautiful. It needs not to be like Zuckerberg's bad dream. Like I don't want it to be commoditized. I don't want you to be commoditized because I'm inviting you to a party at a place that is going to commoditize you and your data. Like I don't want that at all. The adverts, oh my word, every three posts is an advert now for something I don't want. Stop trying to tell me I'm fat. Piss off. Like, I don't want adverts for that. I don't need divorce adverts. I don't need meal planning. Thank you. Beans on toast is a meal. That's a full sentence. Like, I, we don't, I don't need any of this crap. I don't want it in my life. Added to which, when you're on Facebook, because you have to go in there to get to the community, there's always some bugger moaning about something in your timeline that you don't want to see. Like, I don't care if you went to the country park and people weren't wearing masks and they were too close to you, right? Sharon, go and tell them. Go and tell the person breaking the rules. Stop whinging to all of us on social media. We don't need you with your non-PhD preaching at us about this person who came too close to you when you were at the park. Because we don't care. We don't want to hear it. It's negative. Just go sort it out with the people who have committed the crime. Do not come and put it on us, Sharon. Thank you. We don't want to know. Pictures of your cat? Absolutely. Some kind of mild peril that we can all have a bit of a giggle at? Fair enough. But we don't want to hear about you having a barbecue and bubbles when we're locked up on our own with our kids and we haven't seen anyone for weeks, right? We don't want to hear about you whinging about people being too close to you in the supermarket queue. Right? We don't want any, any of that. We want you to make us laugh, show us pictures of dogs or shut up, frankly. Just me speaking here. Can you tell I'm a little bit sad, you know, sick of it, fed up of it? of the whining. So I don't want to be inviting you to that kind of environment where you've got to kind of, it's like inviting you to a re, a, an awesome dive bar in the wrong end of time where you have to kind of trip over all this horrible stuff in order to get to the amazing dive bar. Not that my podcast is a dive bar, but I am a very big fan of a dive bar. Like the right kind of atmosphere is good everywhere. So for that, those kinds of reasons not just, I mean, Sharon is a made up person, by the way. Like I do know some people call Sharon and some unfortunate people call Karen these days. I really feel sorry for the Karens. It's not their fault. Like the real actual Karens who were christened Karen and given that name by their parents, not like the other kind of Karens. Anyway, <laughs> you know, there's other reasons why people don't want to be on Facebook. Um, you know, for job reasons, people contractually can get into trouble if the wrong thing is shown on their timeline and Facebook just arb decides what is going to show to other people you barely know as we know because we look at our Facebook timeline and go what what even who is that no idea who they are you know um, if they're going to write of instead of having every sentence I'd have got rid of them already it bugs me right (laughs) yeah so that and obviously with Instagram similar story. Like I don't want lifestyle rammed down my throat unless it's interiors as I discussed last week. Like I don't want to hear about, about any of the other stuff. So I just don't feel like they're the right, if I'm inviting you to my living room to hang out with me and all of the other lovely knitters, like if I was organizing this event in real life, well, it, the internet is real life, but in person, I would not be inviting you to the kind of establishments that would represent Instagram and Facebook in real life. Like we would not be not be going there. Okay. So all this is to say, slightly ranty, um, that I think I've come to a, it's a 50, 50 decision, but I'm pretty much there for a platform, for a community, for the podcast that is not social media, basically, because I'm just sick of, I'm sick of social. Uh, it's, 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 and I've, I wrote this on Twitter. Twitter's my new favourite social media because all the angry people have left Twitter and gone to Instagram. Twitter's a dream right now, kids. And um, saying that basically, like, for me, social media has become almost a piss and moan fest. And I don't want that. Like, when I go on there, I don't want that. When I'm thinking, let me go hang out with my shiny crew, I don't want to be having to walk through a piss and moan fest to get there. I want it to be good. And, I don't want to feel negative. Like I have, there's enough to worry about in life, like in general, without adding negative things in, like the world is negative enough, enough negative things happen without you adding more in. Cack in, cack out, as they say, right? If you eat bad food, you feel bad. And if you fill your brain with bad negative things or untrue things or fake news or way too much Donald Trump, 
that it's going to turn your brain to mush. You are going to feel bad about yourself. Like, there's no two ways about it. Rubbish in, rubbish out. You eat bad, you feel bad. Okay, you consume bad, you feel bad. I don't want to feel bad. None of us want to feel bad. We want to feel good. So, I'm aware that I sound like I'm ranting completely and I kind of am. Like, there's a lot of pent up aggression going on here, clearly. <laughs> I need a punching bag or something. Um, But in order to kind of craft that, good experience for the podcast um we're moving basically i'm going to be closing the facebook group in a couple of weeks i'll give you a chance to catch up there'll be lots of notice and we're going to be moving elsewhere and um, the place i have in mind is mighty networks it was it's somewhere that i've looked at before it wasn't really doing what i wanted it to before but at the mo and also i didn't want to try and have to bring people over from place where they were already comfortable and already hanging out because that's friction and we don't necessarily want to add friction to the experience but at the moment people don't even want to be on social because it's such a toxic place to be and I want somewhere that's non-toxic and lovely and fluffy and has lots of tonics tea cakes and you know sequined pillows and all that kind of good stuff so that's where I think we're going to go to I'm working on building out the bones of that at the moment there are still issues with it there are issues with all platforms unless i completely build my own from scratch with a full tech stack that and that's just not possible at the moment and i want something that we can move to and and kind of crack on and figure out the rest from there on in so i will put some um bits and pieces in place that's what i'm working on at the moment to kind of so it's not just a blank page and then we can go over there and i'm hoping once we're over there we can do a lot more interactive stuff. We can do more lives. We can do some VKNs like we used to do, um, virtual knit nights and get together more and organise more stuff. I want to hang out with you more. I just, I don't want to hang out with you in a scruffy pub that's, you know, the toilets are leaking and, and everything's just a bit grubby and unpleasant. I want to hang out with you somewhere that's lovely and clean and nice and pleasant and a good place to be that makes you feel good and comfortable and that you enjoy coming to. And it's a conscious decision to come there, not just a drive by because you were notified by some faceless corporation, social media. So yeah. What do you think? Like, would you prefer that for the podcast? How, because this is the other thing as well. I'm, th- I'm seriously a vigorous consideration to just closing my social media for the podcast because most of the new listeners are not coming from social media because I'm not doing much on social media because it's a horrible place to be at the moment. They're coming from organic. So do you, do you, would you prefer to interact with me on social media? Like if you slide into my DMs, I'm there. Unless you're Cody, the doctor, vet, you know, military guy with no followers and the same five sort of um, opening gambit pictures telling me I'm a beautiful lady. Unless you are that person, you can slide into my DMs like I'm chatting to you. Do you do that? Would you prefer a more social club atmosphere? Like, what what are your feelings on this? Are you getting the massive social media fatigue? Are you finding it's making you feel worse or better about life in general? Is it a place of inspiration anymore or does it just make you want to die inside? Let me know. Don't tag me at shiny bees because I'm not going to be on social. No, I'm only joking. Send me messages however you want. I'm still at Shiny Bees on everything, but you can email me, info at shinybees.com and chat to me there as well. But I'm interested in what you think and whether that is something you want for the podcast, whether you think it will help. And yeah, we'll, we'll take it from there basically and work towards crafting the experience that we want for, for the podcast. So yeah, speaking of crafting the experience you want, like what are you making at the moment? I feel like I'm behind on what everyone's making. I am knitting still on my compass, my compass jumper. It's gone a bit wrong. It's gone a bit wrong. Um, I'm not, I've, I've, I've not done any forensics on it yet to figure out how I've managed to get it wrong. But I have been knitting on one of the sleeves. Um, I'm following the pattern. The numbers are right uh, as per the pattern. Um, 
However, this sleeve appears to be twice as big as it needs to be. And I'm, I'm fully not exaggerating when I say it is twice as big as my arm. Now, granted, I've lost a little bit of weight in lockdown. I've not been eating all the tonics because the factory's been closed and been doing loads of yoga with Adrian. I'm on like day 89 of daily yoga. So in fairness, my arms are way more toned than they were when I started this jumper, for sure. And it appears to fit okay around the yoke, but the rest of the fit is a big fat no. It's a massive, massive no. Um, unless I want a bat wing jumper. And I, 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 no, I don't want a bat wing jumper. It's not, not one of the features of the pattern. So I did just gaff off, you know, the, the yarn the pattern called for and substituted another DK. That should have been fine, to be honest. If you're substituting one DK with a similar twist and a similar plumpness, same weight, same materials for another DK, most times it's going to work. Most times it doesn't work. It's operator error. And I'm suggesting that I might be at fault here. Um, you know, there's, there was no reason why that that sub should have been anything, anything but. Um, the gauge is definitely looser. And I suspect that might be because I definitely have knitted on this jumper in various states of inebriation, like possibly more more beer than than is advisable when knitting on something that requires accurate gauge, shall we say? So that I mean, that's definitely another strike against Joe's knitting abilities or lack of attention being paid to the pattern slash gauge slash tension, etc than it being a fault of the designer or yarn producer. Like, it's never their fault. If you're knitting something, it doesn't go right. It's your fault. Like, that. that's how it is, unless the pattern is wrong. I don't think the pattern's wrong. I think Joe might have been a little bit boozed. Um, but yeah, there's some very, very odd, odd kind of gauge going on with it. And it is the 39-inch version, medium to large, right, I, possibly overkill, possibly overkill. I'm only like a size 12. So I think that the 39 inch for that on the bust might be accurate, but the rest of it probably isn't. Um, and I, we're all a little bit guilty of thinking we're a little bit bigger than we are. And I clearly, I think I either was considerably larger or mismeasured or just had a bit of a brain fart when I was picking the size for it because it is definitely like it's not going to look nice because it is too 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 big now I do need to check you know like that my tension was knit to the right numbers and everything yet whilst I'm doing my forensic examination of of why how I managed to get it so completely wrong but I mean that is hours hours of knitting both drunk and sober hours on aeroplanes everywhere of working on on this jumper but I want to get it right and you know it's yarn it's not gonna break if you get it wrong like you don't learn anything from the the patterns that you get right you know what I mean you yeah you achieve it and you're like whoop I did it I managed it I got it in with you know only a handful of errors or sometimes you know it's a no error jumper I got it finished, you know, and it, it looks like it the the picture and all that kind of stuff, but you very rarely learn anything from not making mistakes. And my argument always is if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying, like you are not far enough out of your comfort zone if you're not doing things wrong. Like making a mistake is not a problem. The yarn is not going to break. You can rip it back. It's knitting. You can always rip it back this obsession with being right all the time, being seen to be right all the time and being afraid of making mistakes will prevent you from growing as a person, as a knitter, as everything. It's okay to be wrong. You just say that you're wrong. I got it wrong. Like I, I've got this one way wrong. Like <laughs> spectacularly wrong. If you, I'm going to get a picture because I, I need, I'll, I'll share them with you. I'm not bothered. It's my knitting. If I want to get it wrong, I'll get it wrong. Screw everyone else. Like What's it to you? It's not even your knitting. So yeah, it's it's spectacularly badly wrong. But 
you know what? I was already thinking that it was going to be too big and baggy. I was already thinking I should have added some waist shaping in the back of it because the pattern pictures actually do have waist, waist shaping and the pattern doesn't. So it's never it was never going to look like what I wanted anyway because I wanted it like the picture and the pattern doesn't have the waist shape in it. So I was always not going to be quite there with the finished object. The colours are beautiful. Um, really nice. The yarn is great. Loving knitting with that. But, uh, you know, uh, maybe it was a subconscious thing. Maybe my subconscious was like, Joe, don't finish these arms because you're not going to love it. Maybe this was why I got stuck on it for so long because I knew it deep down, like subconsciously knew it wasn't right and it needed looking at again. You know, any one of those things is plausible. Also, trying to knit, having had too much wine, is always a problem. Frankly, friends don't let friends knit drunk, do they? Unfortunately, these friends weren't knitters and that's how it ended up happening. But yeah, all that is to say, I think we're going to be having a rip, rip, rip party. Frog it, Mr. Frog, Kermit is in the building, <laughs> I think. Um, so I might just take it back, to, all the way back to full up to balls, measure everything again. I'm going to print a new version of the pattern in case there are any problems. I'm going to swatch properly and then crack on from there and see see if I can unpick forensically what I've done wrong with it. So when I've done that, I will report back to you exactly how I managed to cock it up so badly that the arms are twice the size they need to be because I'm pretty sure that my arms are not half the size they were when I started this pattern, despite many downward dogs in between the times. So yeah, so that all that means is I, I, I've, got, I've got a space in my life for a new project. I've got a space in my life for a new project. And I'm quite excited. And I, I'm, I'm really not sure what's in it. I've got two options. Option number one is in my desk drawer, as you can hear. And that is to work. I've got a skein of Beedale four ply from Eden Cottage Yarns. It was a gift from lovely Victoria. And she she gave it to me when I was working on book actually on drift and with them and it was a gift and it's beautiful. It's fifty percent baby yak and fifty percent mulberry silk. I've got four hundred meters of this in a beautiful grey. It is like a little yarn baby. I love it. And I've got some beads. I've got some Mizuki triangles. They're my favourite beads, as you know. Bigger is better when it comes to the beads, just get them out. And I've got 75 grams of those, the just clear ones with a little bit of the Aurora, Boreal, Aurora Borealis um, AB sheen on them, the, the covering. There's probably a proper word for that, but I can't remember it. So I've got some of those. So I'm looking at some sort of beaded shawl there, I think, party people. Maybe a boonet, love a boonet, maybe not. And then I've obviously got my Orchideshi jumper. Am I ready to jump straight into another jumper or am I not? That is the question. So maybe we should have a poll. You should definitely, we'll have a poll, right? Do we start the beaded shawl or do we do another jumper that's different whilst I forensically examine my performance or lack thereof on the compass sweater? What do you think? What do you think? Let me know. You can email me info at shinybees.com and tell me what you think of that. You see, if we we're in our new Mighty Network, we'd be able to do a poll on there now, but we're not. So yeah, so that is all I've got for you really this week in terms of chit chats. We're at 30 minutes and I've got another episode for you on Friday, haven't I? Where we're going to relive some of the finest Shiny Bees moments of the last eight flipping years. Amazing. So show notes won't be horrendously plentiful for this episode, but you will find them at shinybees.com forward slash 152. And otherwise, I hope you'll have a lovely week. Happy crafting, dearest friends. And I will speak to you all again soon. Cheers.
You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast. Show notes for this episode are at shinybees.com forward slash 152. And if you enjoy the podcast, please do head over to iTunes and leave a review of the show. It helps other people find the podcast. And obviously it makes me feel like a legend. To laugh again with you, if that's all right.